Hey there, I am over here at a um, native plant garden that I installed at a high school and I just doing some end of season check-in and weed maintenance and see how it's going. It's pretty much out of my hands now but I, I wanted to pop by and take a look um, at things. So this was installed this August, uh, the August 13th and it is now October 23rd. So um, it hasn't, it was late season installation, pretty intense time of year for an install, but that's when we were able to do it. And um, this, this spot posed some unique challenges, but it was exciting and fun to design it. I grew all the plants out myself, designed it, selected them, and then um, did the install with my partner and a coworker of hers. So um, I thought I'd show you what, we got here and uh, take a look at everything. So for the record, and we can check back, you know, next year and see what hangs on through. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you what we got. So we'll start at this end. This was the more challenging end. It's got, it's, it's a pretty hot spot. You know, we've got um, east and south exposure. This uh, retaining wall uh, takes a lot of heat and the soil is pretty rough. So we amended it with a bit of organic material um, but the base soil is kind of this gravelly clay and um, so getting some organic material helps with some moisture retention and drainage. But here we go. Uh, we got Artemisia ludoviciana there, silver sage or prairie sage. That is a Asclepius subverticillata. Um, I've heard world milkweed or horsetail milkweed. This is a great one. It, it doesn't look like much right now, but Callilophus, well, it was Callilophus. It, they moved it. They did the genetics. It's um, uh, Enothera serrata now, which is pretty obvious when you see the ovaries on these things. This one's not flowering, but it's got the um, inferior ovaries. If you look closely, they're very small, li linear almost. I don't think there's any on this guy. Um, linear almost, but they... Uh, they have the little, the four wings you would you would see on a Inothera. Um, speaking of this Inothera macrocarpa there. And then I've got over here some grasses. So um, along this leading edge, we got um, Budalea cardipendula, Cytos grama. And uh, you know, a little more into the interior, I've got um, blue grama, Budalea gracilis. There's some Equiligia in here. And then these guys, uh, that's Symphiotrichum oblongifolium. It's a nice aster, there's three of them here. So I ran this length on the side with Symphiotrichum oblongifolium and uh, Budalea cardipendula because they are, for one, quite drought tolerant, but also salt tolerant, pretty heavily salt tolerant. So they can handle being by the sidewalk. It will get salted in the winter time. Um, whereas uh, Blue Grama is a little less so, so I kept that back a touch. Um, there's Campanula rotundiflora, some uh, Yucca, there's Artemisia frigida throughout, um, there's some more of that Symphire Trichum. These get quite big with time, they make a nice mound. Um, over here we've got um, Datura ridei. It is, uh, tends to behave like an annual out here. Um, it does self-seed readily, but this was mostly a placeholder for that guy. So there's fern bush right there. It's little, and it'll get pretty sizable eventually. But for the time being, um, the Datura is kind of a placeholder. So this one will sit around, take up the space in the corner, and gradually fill out, um, or, or be out-competed by the fern bush as that thing grows. That's a pretty long-lived one. We've also got mixed in here some Allium cernuum, a uh, nice nodding onion, and uh, so much for weeding. Um, you know this spurge, Euphorbia, I, I want to say terrestris, um, I'm going to be mixing that up with something, but a sand mat spurge, it's supposedly a native, but it can be a little intense, and uh, so I'm just blocking it out. As this stuff grows up, it'll compete just fine, but uh, you know, I may go ahead and take that out. Um, so nodding onion, Linum lewisii, it's a nice one, spring bloomer. Uh, we got some 
big uh, little blue stem back here, Schizocarium scoparium, great blue sage. There's a couple of those throughout. Uh, there's some of that great blue sage still blooming over here. I got a, um, oh, there it is. Uh, that's a dwarf sunflower. It's a perennial sunflower, um, Helianthus pomila. There's some more blue, uh, side oats grama, looking good. Gallardi, of course, um, does not care, just goes for it. There's a little hint of what's coming. Um, yeah, Gallardi's looking phenomenal. And then I got a Gastiki, uh, that is a Orantiaca Coronado Hyssop, I think some people call it. That's a pretty one, hummingbirds, bees like it alike. Um, then I wanted to have some familiar stuff. You know, I think uh, native gardens can be a little daunting if you don't recognize things, so at least alluding to something semi-familiar. So I got some Asclepias tuberosa back here, a little more sheltered, along with some Coreopsis lanceolata. Those are forms and, and shapes that I think are kind of in horticulture, and, and people will, you know, it's an anchor point. Along with something over there, I'll get to that though. Uh, there's another Frigida. Looking great and bushy. Um, here we go on a Mirabilis multiflora. Uh, this is a great one. And it must be warmer over here. I live about a mile that way as as uh, the crow flies. And mine have taken the frost and they just immediately go dormant whenever it hits that first frost. But this one's still hanging on. So. I gave this one a nice big corner. It'll fill out space and tried to only put things near it that can handle this spreader because this thing will get like eight feet across. Loves it hot and dry. Uh, there's Stan Leah Panada, uh, Princess Bloom. Beautiful yellow spring bloomer. It's a nice big sub shrub. I mean, it's incredible. Now I'm curious to see how this does long term because some people suspect it's got a like selenium dependency. Um, but it might be more of a matter of it just being able to handle selenium and so it can grow with less competition. We'll see. Um, over here is a great one. So I got tucked in with kind of a row of blue grama here, this guy. And uh, this is uh, Echinacea angustifolia. And I recently got to see a great population of this up in the Dakotas and Wyoming two different sets of hillsides it was stunning and um ugh, i'm not trying to not trying to be like a snob or anything but it, echinacea purpurea purple cone flower and it's great it's a great plant pollinators love it um it's like a staple of eastern plains but um it just takes a lot of water out here and uh i don't know it's kind of just used it's used a lot. It's, it's heavily used. So this guy, Echinacea angustifolia, is incredible. I mean, you can see, look at those leaves. This, this thing is adapted for, for the, the short grass prairies and foothills out here. Um, extra fuzzy, low growing. It'll, it'll make this mound, you know, not much bigger than this. Um, I think I got one in the garden that's about this big. And whereas uh, Purpuria, it's a pretty short-lived perennial. We're talking like five years tops, usually like three. Uh, Angustifolia can live, an individual plant will live for 50 years. Uh, it is a very conservative strategy, takes its time. Uh, it's not rushing. So it is a beautiful plant. This one's got some growth points coming in. Happy to see these are doing well. Um, lovely plant, I mean, amazing. And when they get going, they'll be, you can see this one has some early seed heads, but they were recently planted, so I wouldn't expect them to do much this year. Uh, amazing plant though. I mean, what a killer, killer plant. Um, so that's another great point. Like people know purple cone flower. Here's this thing. The flowers at least are familiar. There's some Antonaria growing in here. I think this is parvifol parvifolia. Yeah, it's parvifolia. Not neglected, it's parvifolia. These will spread out. They're in mats in several places. They'll, they'll move around. Uh, some more allium. And, you know, got some uh, yarrow and uh, some ariaganums up here. Right? You don't see a ton of buckwheats 
and so I'm excited for those. Those will be spring bloomers. And some more Equilegia. So, um, the last thing I wanted to mention was seasonality. Oh, winter fat too. Crashed in a Covia Lanata. This is what a cool shrub. So, so much for weeding. I missed some spots. Uh, what a cool shrub. That's just a neat one, it's unique. Um, so, I wanted to go for something here that uh, you don't normally have to deal with in a native garden. And this one has like a very unique, we'll say seasonality of viewing. It's a school, right? So you've got people here, mostly through the winter. So they'll see this garden in spring and they'll see this garden in late summer, August. So I was trying to think about winter interest for one. So I got the grasses and the cone flowers with their nice dark heads. You got um, the yarrow to have some umbels hanging out, the uh, stuff like that that'll have some structure. So I went with shrubs and yucca and so forth. I wanted winter structure, but it, for bloom times, I, I had to focus it in on stuff that could handle this spot, but also stuff that will bloom very early in the spring and then very late in the summer. And there's plenty of stuff that'll be going the whole year round, but you know, for early spring, you've got like Campanula, your uh, Aquiligia, your uh, Antenaria, and your uh, Areogonum over there. That'll be going um, Arismum Capitatum, the Western Wallflower. That'll be taken off, you know, the, the beginning of the year. There might still be snow on the ground. You can get some bloom time. But then you got your late summer stuff to, to hold it through and into autumn. So your Symphiotrichums. Uh, oh, and for spring, your blue flax too. So there's a lot of blue and yellow. The Stanleya, the, the um, Aquiligia. There's a lot of blue and yellow spring bloomers. But then your late summer stuff will come in and uh, you'll have your cone flowers and your agastiches, all your Asclepius, the Mirabilis. Uh, all these will start showing up. The cone, uh, sake of the cone flowers, the sage, uh, will, will bring up the end of the year. And, uh, then hopefully with the grasses and the shrubs, you'll have a bit of continuous structure year round to, to hold it on. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of a unique challenge, but it was fun to do that in mind. This is a really intense spot for planting and, uh, with the, the salt runoff and with the intensity of the sun, but you also have this seasonal challenge of winter people actually here and seeing this. So mostly through the winter, um, but but I have some good blooms in here for, for uh, early spring and then late summer into autumn. So that's what we got. We'll check on it uh, next year and kind of see how it's doing in the spring, see what comes back how it does. I'm, I'm really thrilled with how much things grew despite a late start and a very intense summer. And at this point, it's pretty much hands off for, for me. There's a teacher here who does a little bit of watering with their students. And uh, I just came by to check in on things, give it a little TLC. So yeah, that's what we got.